Reports suggest Ukraine is preparing for another strike against the Kerch Bridge, which connects Russia to occupied Crimea. The bridge currently provides the safest road connection from the Russian mainland to Crimea, which Russia annexed from Ukraine legally in 2014. Now, Kyiv's forces have managed to halt traffic on the bridge with two separate attacks since Russia launched its full-scale invasion in 2022, once with a truck bomb and once with naval drones. Russia has managed to repair the damage. Now, the British newspaper The Guardian is quoting Ukrainian intelligence officials saying Ukraine is planning a third attack, has the means to carry it out, and expects to destroy the bridge by the summer. Let's bring in military analyst Mike Martin from King's College in London. Mike, good to see you again. Now, if Ukraine is so Hi. confident it has the tools to take out the Kerch Bridge, what are they waiting for? Uh, well, uh, as with all military strategy, it is a question of saying things as well as doing things. There's a narrative to be had here. And Ukraine, you know, is on the back foot at the moment on the battlefield. They're trying to get more weapons from the Americans. And so just to do this is not to get the full benefit from it. Much better to announce it and allow it to play out over a few weeks. The speculation caused the Russians some fear and then to do it because then it dominates the media narrative for a longer period of time. All right, then let's get speculating. We saw Ukrainian drone strikes deep into Russia this week, but against targets Moscow probably mm. didn't expect. Different story here. Would drones mm -hmm. like this be useful against a heavily defended target like the bridge and one that Russia is expecting to be struck? I think, so the problem is actually maybe not defense here. I think the problem is the amount of explosives you can carry on a drone. So if you're going to hit a bridge with a missile or with, you know, something in the water, then that can carry quite a lot of explosive. And, and, and as you can see from your footage there, those, those bridges are, are, are pretty serious bits of kit. A lot of the drones that the Ukrainians are using are quite small. Some of them are bigger, but the bigger ones are slower. They're easier to shoot down. The smaller ones are harder to shoot down, but they don't carry enough explosive. So... Uh, Drones might be used, but I, I suspect not. What about sea drones? Definitely an option. So, you know, as you said in your package, that was something they did uh, previously when they hit the Kerch Bridge. They've also used sea drones really successfully against lots of Russian naval ships. So the Ukrainians have had a really successful run of sinking Russian ships. And, and the advantage of these sea drones is... I mean, particularly when going up against the Russian ships, but also against the bridge, I suspect, as well, is that it's quite a new technology. And a lot of ships and bridges and, and the way that we defend these things traditionally hasn't taken account of these very small unmanned drones that don't go very deep. They sort of hover uh, either at surface level or just below the surface. They're quite hard to detect. So that's definitely an option. Mm -hmm. At this point, Ukraine hasn't received any Western weapons that could do the job. Is there anything new in their arsenal that could allow them to take it down for good, aside from, you know, the two options that have already um, been displayed? Yeah, well, so we've got obviously drones, C, C, C drones. But I do actually think that, that there are these cruise missiles that the UK has given them storm shadows, um, the French have given them a similar system. Um, there's obviously all this discussion about the Germans and Taurus and all the rest mm. of it. But those do have the range and they also have uh, the capability. They, they carry 500 pounds or 500 kilos of explosives. So a couple of those would be very damaging to the bridge. And in fact, uh, several months ago, they used um, some British supplied storm shadows to take out or rather to heavily damage some other bridges on the other side of Crimea, connecting Crimea to the Ukrainian uh, mainland. So I think there are some options. I mean, I don't know whether they have any of those storm shadows left. Um, they were given a whole load uh, at the uh, tail end of last year. But I think that's another option, missile. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that Taurus discussion for a second. I know we've talked mm. about it a lot, but Western governments have explicitly said that the Kerch Bridge is a legitimate target. But, you know, neither Germany with its Taurus missiles or you, the U.S. with, you know, all the options they have on the table will give them the tools to do it. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I've, I find it a bit confusing. 
Um, the, you know, as we've discussed, the, the technological capability is there with these types of missile systems. It is possible that um, you know political restrictions have been put on those missile systems. We do know, for instance, that earlier in the war, Ukraine was given. Uh, missile systems, but explicitly they were told you can't use these inside Russia. You can only use them inside Ukrainian territory. And we ha have actually seen over the last couple of weeks um, all of these Ukrainian attacks on uh, Russian oil infrastructure. There are reports surfacing in the American press that the Americans actually asked them to to pull back from that and not do it. And then and then the Americans reversed their position and said, OK, go ahead and do it. I, I think there's actually a little bit of confusion in Western capitals about, um, I mean, clearly there is in terms of arms supply, but I think also there's a bit of confusion about how far they want to you know, say to the Ukrainians, you can go. Um, and, 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 and we can see that on the battlefield. You know, That's why Ukraine's in a difficult position. Uh, that's why Russia is slowly, slowly making small gains on the land in Ukraine. How much of an advantage would destroying the bridge bring to the Ukrainians? Would it do anything to level the playing field? Uh, Volodymyr Zelensky says the bridge is fueling the war. Yeah, I, I, I broadly think that's correct. The, uh, the, the bridge is a major supply route for uh, Russian forces, both in Crimea but also in that southern bit of Ukraine. So uh, the south from Kherson, you've obviously got the, the big river and the, the, the Ukrainians are holding the, the south bank. And all of that area there, there's only two ways you can supply that. One is over the Kerch Bridge and the other is, is along that little isthmus of land that's between uh, the Donbass and um, Kherson the bit where Mariupol is. And, and there's only one rail link there was being shelled all the time and there's a highway and obviously you can't put much on a highway, but the Kerch Bridge with a rail link and also, you know, a two lane motorway going both ways is a major supply route. So I think that's the first thing. It's a hugely important strategic supply route for the Russians. The other point, of course, is the symbolism of it. This was the bridge that is Putin's big idea. Mm -hmm. He opened it. He drove across it. He took the first train across it. He was the, you know, the driver of the train, or you know, so it appeared in the kind of opening. And so it's it's very symbolic. And to drop the bridge, I think, you know, as we've said, they the Ukrainians have trailed it. They're going to do it. They're going to get the maximum information advantage. Lots of mind games with the Russians. It, it's it's really both of those things. It's both the logistics and it's the symbolism and the information war. Um, that if Ukraine can drop the bridge, uh, they'll get both of those advantages. And the world will be watching that bridge closely. That was Mike Martin. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time.